Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee under Tasha from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tasha. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And the church said, Amen. 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 You might be seated. We're talking about Jonathan Lang, a man that faith in God. We're talking about a man that was disobedient. But I like to use for a subject tonight, we must not feel God. We must not feel God. Would you help me say that? We must not feel God. Look your neighbor in the face and say, we must not feel God. Let's get serious about it. Let's mean what we're saying. We must not feel God. Amen. And the story of Jonah, I believe we can learned quite a bit from Jonah. Jonah, of course, was a minor prophet of Israel. Uh, the book that bears his name is unique among the minor prophets in that it consists of a short story uh, about a prophet um, confining his message to just a single sentence. And that message was 40 days, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. That's all God wanted him to do, was to go down to Nineveh and warn Nineveh and tell Nineveh, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. But Jonah, he had some problems. Even though he was a minister of God, Jonah, Jonah hated the Ninevites. He hated the Ninevites. The message to go and warn them, it was distasteful to him. So he disobeyed God and took his money, went down to the place and where the ships were, boats were, paid his fare, got on board. Headed in a total different direction. Amen. This is John. Hallelujah. He was supposed to be going to Nineveh to warn the Ninevites. You got 40 days and God will overthrow this city. But now John will feel to go and do as God has called him to do. Nineveh was a great city. It was the greatest of the capitals of the ancient Assyrian Empire. Amen. It was flourishing during that time. It was rich way back before we even think about coming into the world. Around 800 to 612 B.C. During that time. Uh, it was located on the left bank of the Tigris River in the northeast Mediterranean. Uh, known today to us as Iraq. And we hear a lot talk about Iraq. Amen. Uh, Nineveh is first mentioned in the Old Testament where uh, one of the cities were established by Nimrod, black man, a hunter. Praise God. And Ethiopia. Praise the Lord. He was a hunter and builder of the kingdom of Baal. Oh, praise God. Remember Baal after the people extinct, the flood. They got together and decided that they would never again be destroyed by flood. So they got together and they began to work on this tower called Baal. Babylon. And they was going to build it. Amen. Now, they unified themselves. If you look at the story, you will see that these people were so together 
until God came down and looked upon them and complimented them. Because God realized these people are one and they can accomplish what they set out to do. How many know that's truth? There's truth in oneness. We are great when we're one. Hallelujah. The enemy can't overthrow us when we're one. But when we begin to become divisive and separated and not working together, then the enemy can do whatever he wants to do to us. Hallelujah. But I said he was a liar. Uh, he's still a liar. Hallelujah. And this was Nineveh. Uh, I mean, this was uh, a Babel that uh, they were starting to build. And God complimented them. And God was the only one to stop them. Yeah. Nobody else could stop them. Amen. And God said they were one and they could accomplish what they set out to do. Yeah. And this is when God gave the first language. He gave them so many different languages. They couldn't understand them, each other. And so they began to separate and to scatter and go into different directions. And that's what things happen to us. Well, we're not one. We're going in different directions and we can't do amen. I want this thing. And Satan know that today. How many know, amen, if you don't work with me and I don't work with you, we just waste some time. We just spin it our wheel. How many know you need me and I need you? Does anybody in there got enough sense to know that? We need each other. Hallelujah. And whatever we're going to do for God, God wants us to do it now. Together. Amen. Together. But here is Jonah, a bad example of when you become disobedient to what God sent you to do. Hallelujah. Jonah was reluctant. He was a reluctant prophet. Amen. He was given a mission. Amen. Jonah, like Jonah, we may have to do things, amen, in life we don't really want to do. But if God called you to do it, you need to start loving it. You need to start getting busy about doing what he's called you to do. Amen. But Jonah, he was the opposite. Amen. He didn't like it. But it's better to obey God. Isn't that right? It's better to obey. Obedience is better than what? Amen. Amen. Yep. Often in spite of our defiance. God is a merciful God. God have mercy on us. Sometimes God let us learn a lesson through our own disobedience. Well, oh, people might kill you, but God still is a God of forgiveness. Well, oh, yes, he will. When God bring you to yourself, or when you come to yourself, then God will forgive you. Amen. And God will even use you to his glory and to his honor. Come on, somebody must know what I'm talking about. You had not always been all that. Hallelujah. But when you begin to talk to God, and God picked you up and turned you around, put running in your feet, cattle in your hand. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. What a great change that was in your life. Like I said, John, amen. God has given John a purpose. To preach to that great city of Nineveh. And cry against Nineveh. Amen. Cry. God said their wickedness is come up before me. And if we ever live in a time of wickedness, it's now. We can see wickedness everywhere. We're living in a country where you can find wickedness everywhere. Well, yes we can. Friends, are we living in a time where people don't know God? Amen. And they're not interested in coming to know God. But those that stumble into our midst, we don't need to miss the opportunity. Amen. To, to, to introduce our Jesus. Amen. Our Jesus. We, if, we, if we do what God has wanted us to do when we got the Holy Ghost, people will know that there is a difference. You see, when the Holy Ghost came, they was all together where? In one place. Oh, what a call. And suddenly, amen, they began to do what? Speak in another language. Wherein they were born. And these people were happy people. They had joy. And, amen, nobody see them passing no bottle. But